Hey folks, Italian Woodward, Fish Hounds Guide Service. It is April the 16th. I'm here with my daughter, Logan. Hey. <laughs> and her uh, future husband, my future son-in-law, Logan. Uh, it's kind of crazy there. We live in North Louisiana, so things like that happen. But no, it's yeah, great couple, and uh, they're engaged to be married this, this December, November, yeah. November. Yeah. Got a big old fancy rock on her finger. Yeah. And some paint. <laughs> so, but yeah, they uh, uh, they helped me out with my guide service. Logan actually does a little guiding for me, and, and with us, we're trying to build this up together. And and uh, so they're out here today. What we're doing, uh, it's getting close to time for our, our, our catfish uh, barrels, uh, hand fishing, noodling. Uh, you may call it different things depending on where you come from. We usually refer to it as hand fishing. Uh, but for those of you that don't know what it is, basically reaching your arm and hand inside holes and, and, and man-made structure like these barrels and boxes, hoping that a big catfish bites you on your hand and you pull it out of the hole and wrestle with it for a little while. Uh, it's an absolute blast, a drilling rush. So, but what we're doing right now is we're setting out a bunch of 55-gallon drums. Um, I'm just going to kind of run y'all through the whole process. Uh, we're going to get them all prepped and ready today. Uh, tomorrow we'll actually be setting them out. So this will be a little two-day deal we're going to do this video of. So, But anyway, uh, to just describe the box, uh, I'm going to let you kind of tell them what we got, Logan. We got a 55-gallon drum, and uh, we usually use blue barrels. Uh, we couldn't get our hands on any of them. We got a pretty good deal on these. So we went ahead and got the white ones. That's why we're uh, coating it with a little bit of spray paint. Get one of them. Yeah. You can see how we're just uh, and we're making it darker. Yeah, that's right. Um, catfish, they like to get underneath the root system or somewhere dark. And uh, we, uh, we're we going to spray paint these black. And right here, we got a, what is that, about a 10? It's, uh, yeah, we're, we're cutting them 13, 14 inches wide and uh that's just enough room for a big old flathead i don't know 40 50 pounder to get his head in and uh do her thing and uh down here at the bottom we've got it all cut open to where when you lay them down flat it's uh all the natural sand whatever you put them on gets in there and uh they like natural stuff to spawn they want, they want dirt under them so a lot of people will put out barrels that or, or boxes, they, they build them solid or they put out a solid barrel. Uh, we've actually seen that and it really doesn't work that great. You will get a few fish in them, but uh, they, they want that dirt underneath them. They get in there and wall them out a hole and, and that's what they're gonna lay their eggs in. So it's best to cut the bellies out like we're doing. And uh, so that kind of gives them something to get in under, but yet still got the dirt where they want it. So. But, uh, but yeah, so basically what we're trying to do is hand fishing uh, gets a bad rap and, and uh, you know, people all the time, oh, you get your hand bit off or a snake's going to bite you or whatever. And that, that does happen. But that's because people are doing it in a, in a natural setting. They're going around checking holes in banks. Uh, boat under ramps. Yeah, boat, under boat ramps, uh, uh, holes under cypress trees. And... Uh, that's very risky. Uh, you, if there's any kind of air pocket whatsoever in that hole in the bank or whatever you're checking, it stands a chance of having a snake, a beaver, uh, whatever in there. And, and you just don't know what you're running your arm in. The way we run our trips is very safe, but very controlled. Uh, me or Logan gets off the boat. We'll pre-check the box for the customers ever get off the boat. We're going to pre-check the barrel or the box and we're going to know before you ever get in the water that okay there's a catfish we're going to be able to tell you that it's a, a small cat or a, a pretty good cat uh, so you already know what you're going into uh, we've already inspected it and know there's nothing dangerous in there so anyway that's the reason we use barrels and boxes uh, so that we can kind of keep this safe for our customers and and uh, do it that route so but basically it's uh, one other thing, Logan, explain to them how we're going to weight these down, uh, how we're going about that. About in the middle of the barrel, we run a hole with a paddle bit through each side, uh, about middle ways through the barrel, and then uh, 
we're filling sandbags and uh, we'll run a piece of rope, kind of a heavy duty rope that's gonna last. These are out, you know, forever. So we'll, we'll run our rope through and uh, we usually, you know, stick another sandbag under each side to set our sandbags that we're fastening to the barrel on top of. Uh, that way we time, we get them good snug and tight when you, when you actually set them out, uh, the weight of the sandbag pulls down tight and it'll, it'll actually, you know, kind of suck down and hold it tight to the bottom. Hold it to the bottom. And we're going to show you every step of that as we go, uh, exactly what we're doing, uh, all the way from filling a couple of sandbags, just so you kind of know every little step of what we're doing. This works great. This is going to hold fish. Uh, it, every barrel or box is not going to get a fish, kind of like brush piles for crappie. Some, some are you put in a good spot, and, and every time you check it, there's a big fish in it. Some may not ever get a fish. So the way we're doing these, we're able to move them as well. Uh, so we're able to pick them up if one's not productive for us and set it in another spot in, in just no time. And so, But anyway, we're going to go through every step, a little video of everything we're doing all the way through to tomorrow. Uh, while Logan gets into cold water, it's pretty chilly right now, so uh, he's the reason he's along on this trip. He's the water dog, so anyway, we're going to show you a little bit of all uh, of We've already got our main belly cut out. We just didn't get quite wide enough on these after looking at them a second time, So, but we're going to take our, their, their tip of our barrel off here so that it sets a little better for us, more like we got it in the back, just kind of open our belly up a little bit. and open wide where it gets, gets plenty of dirt under it. Uh, got a flat cut top and bottom on the front top and the back and then uh, got our main opening cut. So now what we're going to do is drill us two paddle bit a couple holes for our rope and our sandbags. We do drill a couple holes front and back also. Uh, we put a few holes in the tops of these. It kind of helps get the air out where you ain't trying to fight getting them down. It's, that air will get out of there a lot easier for you. Like Logan was saying, we'll run a rope through there. We'll show you all that's more entire sandbags on. That barrel's ready to go. Folks, the most work of this is uh, naturally filling these sandbags. Um, we've already filled 
28 or 30 of them. So nice. anyway, nothing to it. These are cheap. Um, they about, I, I think I paid, I bought them a bundle of 100. I got about 40, 45 cents per bag in them. So, uh, but anyway, it's, it's just part of it. You gotta have something to hold these things down. Uh, so we got just a good sandy spot here that we dig out of all the time. And um, we're gonna fill these bags about three quarters of the way. tie them off just to hold it all together for now but we're going to come back and we'll show you that tomorrow we'll come back and uh, use zip ties to to twist the top over and put a rope into the tie off on that actually attaches to our barrel the only really tip on this little part of the project is uh sandy soil uh, you know if you don't have some good good air with some good sandy soil this this gets hard to do because it's I've, I've used red clay before just because that's all I had and and um, it's just so clumpy and it's just hard to deal with trying to fill these bags so this is some really good fine sand so that's what you kind of want to look for for these things we also use these bags for sinking brush piles a lot also so they work great for that. They're gonna last a pretty good while. They, you know, underwater, they'll last a couple of years before they start breaking down too bad where they're not holding your, holding your whatever box or your brush pile down. So it's the next morning. We've got all our barrels and bags ready to go. Uh, Logan's here again today. My daughter skipped out on us. She didn't want to do the get in the water part. Water's pretty dang cold. We've had some low 40 degree nights here lately and uh, it's got it little bit nippy so yeah. we're going Logan's in a wetsuit hopefully that'll help him uh what Blake, Blake Blake this is Logan's buddy Blake I only met him once so I forgot his name but uh Logan brought him just in case he can't handle the cold water Blake says he's got this so uh so you can handle it that's right all right all right so these are pretty tough guys so anyway we're going we, we got all the barrels ready uh cut we're gonna leave a few unpainted we ran out of paint so we're just hoping algae's gonna cover them good enough and and darken them up for us so but we got a whole crap load of sandbags here uh got the boat pulled over and we're gonna use this little 18 foot aluminum craft there to haul this out so y'all go ahead and we're gonna load these up and uh go out and start showing you how we're gonna tie all this together and what we're looking for to drop them but uh, it's a little bit windy today, a little choppy, but this is Toledo Bend, and that's just something you have to deal with. It's always windy and choppy. I just got my boat slip finished, actually, the other day, and uh, pulled all my bracing off. So actually, this is the first time I put a boat in it, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'd probably only haul five, Logan. We'll get one more. So basically what we do, we carry them out, we figure out where we're going to put them, and then we go ahead and tie our sandbags up to them right there on the spot before we set them in. You really don't want to get everything, you can't already get everything tied up. These sandbags are so bulky and hard to handle that you want to tie them as you go. So anyway, uh, we're going to get out there, and when we get to a spot, we're going to set one. We'll turn the camera back on and, and show you what we're going to do from there. All right, we got a first load, bunch of sandbags, five barrels, uh, all our rope, zip ties, everything we're gonna need for this. So here we go, we're gonna make our first run. show you 
show you exactly what we're doing here. <clears throat> Alright, you talk them through it, Logan. What you, what you doing? We uh, put a sandbag on the ground to raise the, the sandbags. We're actually tying to the barrel up. That way, when our rope's tight and we drop it down on the bottom, uh, these sandbags will pull down tighter and uh, it'll keep it more tighter to the bank. Yeah, if you if you tie your sandbags, to what he's fixing to do now, and the bags are like laying on the deck of the boat, you're going to end up with a little slack in your in your line. Uh, and what's going to happen is your sandbags are going to touch the bottom on both sides, and your barrel's going to have some buoyancy and want to sit there and and bob on you. So you want to set an extra bags or something, whatever you got, uh, on the deck of your boat and then put your sandbags that you're tying to the barrel up on top of it. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna pull it down good and tight to the bottom. <clears throat> what we're doing right here is we'll uh, put the rope in like that, fold it back around. I'll take a zip tie, come around the bottom of it like this. Fasten that down. Go ahead and put two. Pretty tight. Put another one. That way it holds the rope in there kind of like that. And we'll go ahead and tie it. She's like a square knot. Tie it there two or three times. Just like that. And on this side, we'll do the same thing. Run that zip tie in the bottom right. Get it good and tight. Another square knot. <clears throat> All right, and so now once we were, we're, the bags aren't sitting under the bags that are attached to the barrel, that's going to make them pull down tight and it's going to suck that barrel good and tight to the bottom just telling you what we're looking for as far as area of the lake uh, really just about anywhere you want to try one is probably good what we look for is we're like in a little small pocket right off the main lake here uh, we're looking for little side pockets little small coves little creek channels that come back into the uh, into these coves and stuff uh, that's what them them blues and op are going to come into uh they're going to run these banks right along these little contours in these pockets and stuff looking for somewhere to spawn something to get in and, and lay their eggs so uh, we do set some out in the main lake um on high spots right out in the main lake and and uh that type of stuff but most of our barrels and boxes go in these little pockets and inside little coves and stuff so uh we got one ready we just showed you what we was doing there um now Logan's just gonna find the right depth. Um, we we do different things on that uh, as far as depth. Uh, some customers we take don't really want it too deep. Uh, they don't want to. Some don't even want to stick their head under water. So we'll have to set some, and we'll go as deep as seven foot on some of them. Some of them are only gonna be about three foot deep. So all right. So what what are you looking for now, Logan? Well, we're in you know these cypress trees. There's obviously cypress knees under here. I'm just trying to find an area that 
doesn't have a lot of debris, you know, sticks, leaves, roots, these cypress knees. Uh, here I've kind of found a pretty good area. I don't know, it's probably about three foot of water, uh, what it's going to be in. And what I'm feeling for is just like a semi-soft. Uh, I don't want it to be rock hard clay, but I don't want it to be, you know, go up to my knees in mud either. So here I'm, I'm wearing Crocs, and when I step down, I mean the mud's coming right over my Crocs. So uh, it's like a semi-soft mud area. It's got a little bit of, you know, gravel. That's a, they really like gravel, sand. All right, so now, <clears throat> best thing to do is his first time helping us so we're trying to show him what we're doing spin it around where or if he can go over with it like that. it's best to have the butt in back but we're a little backwards on how we set this up so basically more or less get it in the water best way you can and we put the holes in the tops to let some of that air blow out of there if not, it's going. It's hard to get the air out without something where you can see it bubbling out. All right, so he just basically eased it down in there till all the air got out of the barrel, and now he's just going to get it good and firm and make sure the bags are the way they need to be and the barrel's setting good and tight. He'll try to work it down in the mud a little bit, get it kind of seated in there good. So that's pretty much it. He's gonna get it set and make sure it's sitting there good and solid and not weevil wobbling around and, and we'll go to the next one. All right, so we got us another spot picked out. Logan, you found some good gravelly sand. It's, it's nice, right? Yeah. Okay, got us a big cypress tree right up against the bank line here. We already got one tied up and ready. Blake's gonna ease it over into him and let him get it set. Flip the bag over it though, before you give it to him. Let him flip the bag, Logan. If anything, I would turn it more this away because we're always gonna have that south wind. All right, so we got another one set, drop. Logan's just gonna get it turned the right way that we want it, the opening. Get it situated in the, down in the dirt good. All right, we just set another barrel right here. What we got is a bank that's uh, more out in the main lake here. Uh, and it gets a lot of, a lot of south wind. And so only thing you really want to think about there is, is there's two things. One, if you face the barrel towards the bank and the winds uh, the waves crash in the bank and then roll back. We've we've had barrels that get silted in real fast and needy. What happens, that water comes over the top and then as the wave's coming back, it's just filling it full of all the, the grit and debris and it'll silt one in so fast, fish can't even really get into it. So, uh, and then another thing, if you face them towards the waves, towards the main lake on this bank, then uh, what's gonna happen then is it, it's just so much turbulence inside the barrel, uh, the fish don't really like it. They're constantly having to try to fight to, to stay put in the barrel. So uh, these can be some good banks. We've had some boat ramps that we fish that are out in a uh, more main lake, catch a lot of wave activity. Uh, and they do hold a lot of fish, but you want to make sure you face, like in this case, we faced our barrel long ways right here so that it, uh, it didn't get the silt from the backwash and then it doesn't get the main waves crashing into the opening of the barrel uh, keeping the fish constantly disturbed so anyway we're, we're tying one more together here blake's getting it all rigged and we're going to find another spot for it so it's going pretty good we i think we got three more three more barrels and another box put out and we'll we'll have it done that, that's going to make about 14 new sets today so Good deal. Kind of picked us another spot here. Uh, one good thing to really look for, if you see right here, we got a bunch of limbs sticking up. What what it is? A tree fell off the bank, 
and uh, it, it runs out here. It's basically just a lay down right on the bank. And uh, if you know anything about catfish, you know that uh, when they work these banks, whether they're feeding or looking for a nesting spot, if they come anywhere near a big treetop like this, they're gonna swim in and around it and, and just work the whole thing over. So it's a, it's a great spot to uh, look for this kind of stuff. It makes good spots to set these barrels by because what it's gonna do is pull these fish in and and it's just gonna be a better chance of them finding your, your barrel or your box. So Logan's there, he's got him a little spot worked out right there in between a bunch of underwater branches and stuff. We're just going to kind of nest this thing right down there in between it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead, slip this barrel in, and let Logan try to get it worked in up under them limbs. You don't want it to go in this way? About three and a half foot. Uh -huh. Three and a half foot of water. Yeah. This should be a good one right here, man. Little big log laying right there. Sandy? Yeah, it's real sandy. This is going to be on that same main lake bank here, so we're on a uh, little stretch that catches a lot of south wind, so same thing on that last one. We turned the opening a uh, long ways, not facing the bank or the main lake. It wouldn't, it wouldn't catch the silt, and wouldn't catch too much uh, too much wave action inside the barrel. Yeah, it's really coming from this way. Yeah, well, it'll come off the lake. Oh, yeah, it's so much junk all the way around it, and then right where it's at, it's just smooth, right. sandy. Gonna be a sweet spot. Got sticks all over the back side of it. Good deal. All right. Good job, guys. Hey, folks, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully someone got something out of this uh, that's interested in hand fishing. Um, I just would like to take a minute to talk to you about our guide service. I uh, also want to tell you on this, this hand fishing, we... We're strictly catch and release on that. Uh, we do not keep any of the big females that we catch. Uh, we Every one of them goes back. We really want to see these things, you know, stay in the lake and, and do what they're here for, which is to repopulate. So we will keep a few of the small males, uh, 10, 20, 15, 20 pounders, but all the big females that are in these boxes that we're pulling out, we, we put them all back. Uh, also, a lot of these old big fish, once you get a catfish, you know, over 20 pounds are really not the greatest to eat anyway without wasting half your fish, trying to get rid of all the fat and and everything in them. So, but I want to talk to you about our guide service. We're a full guide service here on Toledo Bend. Uh, we're right out of uh, Zuwale, Louisiana, and uh, right close to Manny and Toledo Town. But we have cabins here on the place. Uh, we also, we run several types of trips. We have a couple types of combo trips. We do a, a bow fishing, crappie fishing combo. Uh, a group of guys or women or whatever comes in, we'll take them out bow fishing the evening, that, the night that they get here. Uh, the next morning we wake them up, take them uh, crappie fishing for, you know, the next day for a full day trip on that. Uh, we also have a, a crappie hand fishing combo trip, which is real popular. Uh, we'll wake you up, you can come in and stay, or you can just come here first thing in the morning. We'll take you out uh, crappie fishing from right around daylight or 7 o'clock till 12 or 1 o'clock. Uh, by then, everybody's wet and want an excuse to get uh, get in the water anyway. So then we'll go around and, and check out the numerous boxes that we have in place, uh, boxes and barrels that you've seen us put out on this video. and and try and hand fish uh, some big catfish. So anyway, it's a good time. Um, we got a great place here. Uh, Toledo Bend is an absolute gorgeous, huge lake. Uh, it's uh, the, actually the biggest man-made reservoir in the southern United States, and I believe the third biggest, third biggest in the United States. So uh, it's a beautiful place. Eagles, ospreys, you'll see all types of wildlife. Uh, it's just not just the fishing, but 
it's a sight, sightsee adventure as well. So anyway, uh, if you want to book a trip with us, you can look us up on Facebook, Toledo Bend Fish Hounds Guide Service. We're also on Instagram. Uh, my phone number is 318-218-8882. Uh, you can call me or send me a message on Facebook and, and uh, if you got any more questions about anything and and hopefully we can uh, set you up a trip and, and uh, show you a good time here. So anyway, I appreciate your time. Thanks for all uh, my supporters on my channel. Uh, if, you're not a, if you're not a subscriber, I'd really greatly appreciate it if you'd go ahead and hit subscribe now and follow us and hit the little bell there so you get notified when we put out a new video. We're going to have a lot of videos this summer uh, on these uh, us catching big catfish and our customers catching big fat catfish out of these barrels and stuff that we just put out on this video. So anyway, like I say, thank you. Thank you for your time and your support. Give God all the glory. God bless you. We'll see you on the next go around.